Hi, this is James Garner, Tour Library here for appreciation video. Today is Rod Armacan's 69th birthday. Happy birthday, Robert. So today I'll be do, doing an appreciation video on all the books that I currently own of Rod Armacan. A little background before I begin with this video. Rod Armacan is an American horror, science fiction, thriller writer who has written a, a number of books of, of different genres over the years. Um, I kind of find him actually a lot better than Stephen King. Uh, some of his books that I've read, like uh, just I find his writing structure is a lot better. Um, uses less words, and he can describe a lot of detail with with few words, and can build these great dramatic scenes. Unlike King, I just feel that um, puts like way too much description into his um, bo um, books and stuff, and. And Robert, and I find that at times Robert Ken doesn't get enough credit um, compared to some of the other popular authors like King, for example. As Robert, as Robert has written some really good books here, and some of them, uh, when I tell people about them, they haven't even heard of them, but they heard of the other books. And I'm like, you got to check out Robert Ken. He's a really great writer. So, all right, let's give you the video. First book I got right here is The Night Boat. This is one of Robert Cannon's early uh, books that he published. This one's about Nazi zombies and a haunted a submarine. And most of these editions I have are, are from Pocket. Uh, this is from 1980. And this was, um, uh, this is actually, a, well, first published 1980. This is a, a reprint from 1988 in October. I really love this cover. It's just sick. This was a fun book. I, I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, next book, Ryan McCannon, Bethany Sin. Again, uh, this is not early book, uh, uh, not early book of his, and I really love this car. I just really like it. The the woman riding the horse, and you got the the horse skull and the moon. Just really an eye catching cover. Um, the person who did most of these uh, Ryan McCann books is an artist by the name of Maria Morrow. Really, uh, really good artwork on here, um, but sadly she passed away this year, and she created some truly eye-catching covers for Armour Cannon books and other stuff for Pocket. Okay, this was um, first published in 1980, and this was um, a reprint of 1988 in October as well. This was another interesting book. This is about basically a couple moves into this town, and basically it's mostly popular of women, and it does, has, has like very few men, and... The mayor of this town is a woman who's secretly a witch and has like this like cult, and it's basically about the woman trying to revolt against men in the town and get the the, do uh, the father's daughter against her own father as well. It was a really interesting book, and I enjoyed it. I have to read this again. Okay, next book I got Mystery Walk. Uh, this is one of the few um, I got this and a few other books I, uh, I haven't read yet of Robert Cannon. Um, this is uh, one of his earlier stuff, and I really Love this cover, despite the fact that the cover has a bit of a crack in it. Uh, but this is a really cool cover. And let's see. This is by um, this is by um, Bantelin Books, and this was first published 1983. I really, I really don't remember what the plot of this what this one's about, but I heard it's really good, so I look forward to checking this out. And I also have, I might as well show it now, the hardcover edition, which is really cool. It's got like um, a boy, and there's like a snake on fire, there's a hawk. I think this has something to do with about um, a kid with psychic powers, and he's up against like some supernatural force, I think. I think that's what this is about. And on the back of the hardcover edition, there's Mr. McCann himself in the back. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, this is the second book I actually read. When I first discovered Robert Cannon, uh, I'll get to the one book after this one, but after I read the other book, and when I read this one, I was hooked on Robert Cannon after reading this book. This is my personal favorite of his. Swan Song. This was uh, published in 1987, and basically this is like a post-apocalyptic, uh, supernatural, like, um, po post-apocalyptic um, action book, and let me tell you, this thing right here is 100 times better than Stephen King's The Stand, and 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 that's not and I'm not like over exaggerating. This book is better than The Stand. I read The Stand um, years ago, like in four days. I had the uncut version, I, and I read like 100 like 100 pages a day. No, not 100, 300 pages a day. Correction, 300 pages a day, and that's the only time I've ever done that because it was such a thick book. And let me tell you that The Stand was a real disappointment. 
uh, but I'll discuss that in a later video. But this book right here, mm, this really blew my mind. I definitely plan on reading this again uh, for, a, for a future um, trilogy series I have planned uh, coming up this year. Anyway, <clears throat> so let's see. Yeah, Pocket 1987. <clears throat> basically, this one's a bit, basically about um, the, the tension between the uh, United States and the USSR, Soviet Union, um, has basically reached the breaking point where um, a nuclear war is basically about to happen, and the president... Um, Basically, doesn't want to be the president anymore. He's just he doesn't want to be um, the position he's at anymore because he knows that how horrible this war is going to be. And nuclear war erupts between United States and America, and basically the book follows the, um, the main character, um, this girl, her, 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 um, follows this girl named Swan Son, and um, she meets this um, black boxer known as um, um, Black Fra Black Frankenstein, I think his name is, or something like that in the book, and basically. Um, he saves her and her and her, and her her mother and her brother who's at a gas station as uh, her her mother has basically left her um, her asshole boyfriend who's basically uh, took the rent money they were supposed to pay for the rent bill to buy beer so she's like fuck you I'm I'm leaving you so she takes the kids with her and she's about to uh, get away and then she bumps and um, they bump into this um, boxer and then the nuclear bombs dropped and basically um, swans. Um, brother and mother die and then the uh, she d then develops like powers where she can like b bring things back to life like um plants so then um so sh so she's trying to help out like people and stuff and then um there's this um colonel who's gone in army colonel's gone insane he has the these like band of criminals that follow him and this one guy kind of comes his right hand man roland and basically they find out about um uh, Swan Son and um, uh, found out what she's doing, so they decide they want to get rid of her, so they can rule the wastelands of, of the United States. And it's a great book, a big battle, lots of action, and interesting characters. A really excellent book that is way better than the Stand. And if you're looking for like um, a post-apocalyptic epic, I recommend Swan Son. You will not be disappointed. Okay, a little drink here before I get back to my video. Okay, this is the first book I read of Robert Cannon. Stinger, um, this was published by Pocket in 1988, and I, again, I really love that cover, I just, that is so sick. This one is basically an alien invasion story where it's about, um, this, uh, alien basically has the ability to take over other people's bodies and while, while sharing them, of course, kind of like, um, sort of to the hidden in a way. And then there's this other alien that's after this um, alien. I forget what, what it calls itself in the book. I'll have to read it again. Um, this this other alien, though, Strainer, is just a bad person. He's basically kind of like a bounty hunter who works for the House of Fist. And basically, it's this a bunch of um, these like um, evil kind of dictator-like aliens that kind of uh, form this like um, kind of like um, military um, kind of dictatorship in the galaxy, and they basically. They take over planets and they use the planet's own weapons against the, um, the, the like the, the 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 people of the planet to basically enslave them. And basically, this ta this small town that's in the border between uh, Mexico and Texas called Inferno. And basically, the economy is just is collapsing. the The town's own high school is basically is going to have its final year, and then er and, and it's shutting down. All the teachers are all going to work elsewhere, and the only thing that's giving um, the the police um, the job there is the two gains um, within Inferno between in the, within the town of Inferno and the Mexican gains across the border and stuff. Excuse me. The main character uh, Corey Lockhart basically has had enough of his uh, his asshole father and decides he's going to graduate high school, hop on his Honda motorcycle and and go his own way. And just as he's doing that, this whole uh, thing happens where the alien takes over this girl's body and then she war then the alien warns them. Of, of strainer and basically when he captures people he basically recreates them into um uh like he basically takes pe animals and people and basically uh mutates them into his um his own creations and unleashes against them uh, against the town and stuff it has some really good action set pe uh, pieces in this book uh like one scene there's um he creates like this dragonfly like creature that attacks a helicopter it's a really cool scene and, and a bunch of other stuff that happens this would make a really good movie that and swans on a couple other books of robert town would make really good films but this was the first book I read, and after I read this, then I uh, read Swanson, became hooked on Robert Cannon. Another good book, if you haven't read it, check it out. 
Okay. Uh, next book is The Wolf's Hour. This is a World War II thriller, um, kind of supernatural book, um, not really a horror book. Um, this is my kind of least favorite of the Robert Cam books I've read so far. Um, well, I had a really good idea, but the ending was kind of a bit of a letdown. Like, I, I, I read the whole, I read this story, and I was like, okay, so the main character, basically, he's, um, uh, 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 this guy they can turn they can turn it's a werewolf and he can shape shift and stuff and he's like you know got double strength and he like tears Nazis to pieces when he's in werewolf form, but the ending was such a letdown. I thought I was like expecting something like 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 more grand and bigger and stuff and the ending was kind of like this is how you're gonna end it. I'm not gonna spoil it of course. Um, I'll let you re read read that for yourself of course. But anyway. This was um, by Pocket, published in 1989. It's, a, it's an alright book, but it's my least favorite of, out of the Raw Rock Hand books I read. Okay. <clears throat> right. okay, next. The Blue World. This is a collection of short stories. Uh, this was published, uh, I believe, in 1989. This edition I have is from 1990. And again, a sick cover there. Uh, this has some really good short stories. I really liked in here. Um, Yellow Jacket Summer, the very first story in here. Let me tell you, this story gave me goosebumps when I read it because I hate bees. I hate them. Any kind of bee, I hate it. Even bumblebees, I hate bumblebees. And especially hornets, I hate those motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Yellow Jacket Summer is basically it's about this family. They're they're like on a like they're going somewhere. It's not. It doesn't say where exactly, but they've been on the road for like days and I, I can imagine anyone who's been on long family trips can imagine you know the the drama that happens when you're sitting in a vehicle for so long it gets hot and the people complain are we there yet and stuff like that so this family finds this small town and it's like let's stop get some gas let's re re relax for a little bit before we go back on the road to wherever we're going and they notice one thing, they notice something's very off about this town. There's hardly anyone. It's almost like a ghost town. They find this cute yet kind of quiet boy with like, um, what is it, red or orange hair, I think. And he's kind of strange. And then there's uh, the guy who works at the gas station. And then there's a person who works in the diner. And that's it. There's nobody else. You're like, where is everyone? Then when the father goes to use the outhouse, he is horrified when he looks up in the ceiling and sees millions of yellow jackets crawling along the ceiling and the little boy comes in he puts his arm out and all the yellow jackets crawl on his arm onto him and that scene gave me goosebumps because i hate bees and it's just just reading the way how he described them how they're moving on the noise they're making just ugh. <laughs> i hate bees and basically the um the family finds out this boy has the power to control these yellow jackets and he's killed off everyone in this town and has kind of controlled it and the ending of this story is really cool. And the family finds out what's going on. Basically, they decide, we're, okay, we're going to get the kids the hell out of here and save them so they're not so they're not prisoners of this boy. And the boy attacks attacks the family as the father and wife get stunned, but the kids get in unharmed, of course. So the father is badly injured, so the, the mother is driving the van, and the boy is, like, standing in front of them, and he puts his arm out to, like, uh, make the bees attack the van, right? I love this scene, how Robert wrote this. I, I just, I, when I read this scene, I visualized the whole thing in my head. So basically, the mother drives right into this boy, and basically his head smacked off the grill, then bashed into the road, and then the front tire ran over his body, followed by the rear tire, leaving a, like a bloody tire trail on the road, of course. And as they're driving away, thinking, oh, we're safe now, there's a storm cloud of hornets falling after them, and I just, I love that, and it was so cool. <laughs> Um, some other good stories in here are Makeup, Doom City, Nightcrawlers, um, what else? Ice Cream Man, and that, some of these stories I remember and I thought they're okay and others I really didn't like. Um, Pin was a really disturbing one. That was, ugh, that was not my favorite at all. That was really disturbing, but, um, yeah, again, my favorites are Yellow Jacket Summer, Makeup, Doom City, Nightcrawlers, and, uh, Ice Cream Man. Oh, no, oh, oh, yeah, here's another one. He'll come knocking at your door. That's another good one. Uh, ice cream, no. Uh, uh, yeah, he'll come knocking at your door. I'm sorry, I mixed the ice cream man up for the, uh, he'll come knocking at your door. That's a really good one. All right. Next book is one I have not read yet, Ron McCannon, Gone South. I have heard a lot of good things about this one. This one's like kind of like um, a thriller. 
and let's see, this is um, Pocket Star Books, and this was published in 1992. This one is about a man who basically has reached his breaking point. He is uh, kicked out of his house and loses his truck, and after getting to um, a fight of some kind, he ends up killing the person. I forget if it, if it was, um, he shoots a cop or some guy, and basically the police are after him, and he's kind of, he's basically, he's had enough and wants to basically to go south and try to get away from everything because he's had enough. Uh, but I plan on reading this book sometime and, ho and hopefully I'll enjoy it. And this is the only newer book by Robert Cannon that I own. There was another book that, that came out in 2017. It was like his first big... Well, actually, this one came out in 2011. But he had this other book that sounded really cool uh, called The Border. And I was looking forward to it because it had a really cool plot about like this alien war that's taking place in Earth and, and basically the humans are caught in it and then um, this boy has like powers and stuff so he becomes like the resistance like he of like defeating these aliens and stuff but when I read the book I was really disappointed it was just not um, how I expected it was not good I did not enjoy that one uh, anyway the, the, this other newer book, book I got The Five um, this kind of reminds me of another book that I reviewed recently on The Killer Riff, which is basically it's about this, like, punk rock or metal band that's playing at some bar, and their topics are about, like, on the problems with the world today and their views on politics and other things they, they don't agree with. And one of the subject matters they're talking about is the whole war in Iraq, and, ha and who happens to be at this bar is Iraq, a veteran who uh, takes a, an insult to the lead singer's... Um, comments on the war and the the, the views on his pol the views uh, he dislikes on politics and other stuff and basically this guy decides to go after these bammers hunt them all down one by one and I, I thought that sounded really cool so I when I go to read this book I hope it's good okay. and the last book that I have Ron Cannon my other favorite of his mind this is a hardcover edition. Um, it's got a really cool cover, and this is, um, I believe, the first printing when I got this. Yep, yeah, first printing May of 1990. The, I have to hold this with two hands because it's heavy. This book is basically it's about a, a, a wife who is uh, just gone to labor, and she's about to give birth to her baby boy. Uh, however. She finds out her husband has been cheating on her, and she's really disappointed. And basically, um, despite uh, after telling her parent, her mother about it, uh, about the the affair that her husband was having, she is uh, disgusted and anger when her mother says that he sh that she should still hang on to him because she's going to need a husband to look after her son. Well, she doesn't want this man looking after her son after cheating on him, so she she's like, I'm divorcing him. I don't want him in my life. And basically is in the process of getting divorce. However, while this is happening, her son is in the hospital. Um, this um, crazed woman, what's her name? Hold on a minute. Uh, Laura, Laura Claymore, that's the, 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 the main character, the mother. Um, this other woman, however, Mar Mary Te Tella, Terror? Tella? Mary Tella, a.k.a. Mary Terror, is basically uh, this kind of Mary Terry is this basically a uh, rebel from the 60s. She was basically against um, the government and the, and basically was part of this um, kind of like um, gang of, of criminals that basically they were trying to overthrow the government and stuff. And um, and she did a bunch of nasty things. And she was like the craziest member out of the group and took a lot of drugs. And, of course, um, they didn't win. So the gang kind of split up. And Mary Terror is basically works at Walmart and has been is still taking acid it has like these like uh, violent hallucinations and stuff excuse me and however she always wanted a child she never got the, the, the chance to raise a child and she wants one however she gets uh, she has a sh very short temper she gets angry uh, gets worked up very easily and there's um, in the one part of the book she has a, a like a doll a baby doll and she, and she thinks it's crying so she puts it on the oven to basically burn it to make it stop crying and she actually uh, tries that on the uh, the baby of um laura claymore that she kidnaps in the story luckily um the, a woman that's with um mary stops her of course but anyway so 
Mary Terror decides she's going to kidnap a baby, and whose baby does she take? Laura Claymore's baby, of course. And when the when when security finds out who took it, the FBI is involved, and they try to um, they try to um, go to a farm and figure they'll find her. Well, Mary Terror has set up a trap, and basically the FBI agents are killed in a bomb blast, and basically they're keeping Laura out of kind of out out of the. Um, they're keeping her out of this, and she's desperate to find her baby, and, and so she decides to go after Mary Terra herself, and goes on a very dark journey. And also, there's a cop who uh, basically uh, um, survived one of Mary Terra's attacks back in the '60s or '70s, and basically decides to get his revenge. This was a really good book. This kept me on the edge of my seat as I read it until at the, the very last pages I read. It was a very good book. This will also make a really good movie too. All right, that is it for all the books I own of Robert Cannon. Um, there is one book I would like to try again. I had uh, kind of a really uh, beat-up copy of it, and I'd like to try it again. They First, which I heard is an absolute fan favorite of uh, Robert Cannon's. Um, that one's about vampires, and the first time I read it, I really didn't get far in it, so I would like to try again. I know a lot of people say that his best is A Boy's Life, and I've seen that book a couple times, but... Mm, up in life coming stories are not really my thing so I'm not really interested in that one I like his um, horror science fiction stuff and there is a other two book series I like to check out of his um, and these other two books that I like to check out are like uh, kind of like um, they're like vampire books and they're said like in the late 1890s or something um, and they sound really interesting um, kind of remind me of the video game blood uh, the first book is called I Trial by Night and then the second one is Last Train to Pre protection i think or prediction i hope i'm not butchering that name but i like to check those out and hopefully maybe uh, robert will have something good coming out um hopefully soon all right that is it for this video i hope you all enjoyed it and if you haven't heard of these books um, do check them out it's robert arcana is a great writer i definitely plan on doing some robert arcana reviews in the future and i got a in our top list which i'll be featuring one of his books in in as, uh, in as well so if you like this video, please like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to October Library and the YouTube channels as well, a place you can post, share, and review fiction. Until then, I'll catch you later.